No open right. hands this time. It's all fists. It's all fists at times. That's right. That's right. What is going on? I am pumped up. It's your boy, Preston, Fat Samurai Guy, back again with another epic versus episode. And I am surrounded by a plethora of amazing talent, badasses, legends. They are all here tonight. I hope you guys are watching. Uh, i having a great time. Thanks again for hanging out with us, getting the show started, baby. And first up, we're going to go around for the introductions. That's right. The psychological thriller director filmmaker from Wellbo USA, Bone Cold. That's right. He is back. Billy Hansen. Welcome back, brother. Thank you very much. I'm stoked, man. I want to go fight somebody now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you will. Yeah. You will. It wouldn't look will. like that. <laughs> but, yeah. And another legend is here. That's right. Filmmaker, director, martial artist. Did the film Lost Phoenix? This movie is legit. Some badass quoted that. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Uh, but yeah, make sure you guys check it out on Amazon Prime and Tubi, I believe now. Right, James? It is now on Tubi, yep. Yeah, welcome, James. First time on Versus, brother. Looking forward to this. Yeah, good to, <laughs> good to have you here, man. Good to have you here. And returning members... We got the Thrashinator, Thrash Pondo Ponds. Welcome back, brother. Thrash Pondo. So great to be back. It's been too, too long, my brothers. Yes, yes. And look at this. We got two action legends here. First on versus John from Action Flicks. He's got the Deadpool figs. He's got the commando poster. Welcome, brother. How you doing? Super excited. Yes, sir. And here he is. Y'all know him. You love him. <laughs> Owen from the Action Elite. How are you? Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Welcome back, brother. Yes. And here he is. If you love movies and metal, he is the man. DJ Anub is in the house. Good to have you, brother. Thank you much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here he is, Kung Fu Santa himself. Rick Myers. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Switching it, to <laughs> Switching it to fists. Yeah, baby. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah. All right. All right. And let's see who we have in chat right now. What legends? Oh, there we go. Kevin from Entertainment Headquarters. He's excited. He's looking forward to this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Eric, what's going on? Good to see everybody watching Shin Batman. He is he is a, he is excited as well. All right. Uh, we had a, 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 a blast uh, on last month's verses. We did John Wick uh, Chapter 4 versus the Ray 2 Electric Boogaloo. And it was epic, hilarious, and badass. As always, these versus episodes. We always have fun here. And uh, I'm not going to tell you who won if you guys have not seen it yet. Uh, but we are back again. And uh, I think I, I think I came up with another pretty good versus one today. That's right. We're talking <laughs> Jason Statham. That's right. We're, guys, we're doing the transporter versus the beekeeper today. That's right. And uh, we're t I, I chose these two because I'm like, hmm. Again, kind of like last month's versus, I like to pick something recent once in a while versus something classic. So I was like, let's do it again. Uh, so we did the beekeeper versus transporter. And I, it's like, it's almost like the film that put Jason Statham on the map as an action star uh, against the most seasoned veteran. Uh, some people would say master level <laughs> Jason Statham. The, the Jason Statham at, at his most Stathamist uh, from the beekeeper. So uh, a lot of fans from Statham say that the beekeeper is his best action movie in his filmography. So is it? We're going to talk about it tonight, but it's good to have everybody here. All right, first up, let's get to it. Billy, he's got the IMDb plot synopsis up. There will be spoiler talk, everybody. Just going to warn you guys for both films. Billy, transporter, take us back to the year 2002, baby. Plot synopsis. Right. Frank Martin, who 
transports packages for unknown clients is asked to move a package that soon begins moving and complications arise. There that is go. maybe the, the vaguest, the vaguest plot synopsis. <laughs> but, but it's hey, accurate. It's very it accurate. Is accurate. Yeah. <laughs> what's interesting. Um, what's interesting is it has two directors there, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you but, watch the movie, it's only it's only, Corey, only Corey's credited, which is interesting. No, well, no, Lewis is credited, but he's credited as uh, what is it? Um, the artistic director. Artistic director, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, but then but the sequel. The they flipped them. The, what, what's up, James? But then for the sequel, they flipped them, so Louis got to be uh, the the main director, and Corey was the action director. Right. Ah, that explains the sequel then. Interesting. <laughs> 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 we're gonna, but we're going to go ahead and get to that. I'll kick it off first. All right, so. I only knew Jason Statham from the Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels guy. And uh, I enjoyed him as an actor. I mean, I didn't see that much of him yet. And I remember seeing TV spots for Transporter. And I was just like, this looks interesting. This might be kind of fun. But it didn't, like, blow me away to where I had to go run out and see it right away. And I regretted doing that because when it came out in video, my buddy brought it over. He was like, no, nah, man, sit down. Okay. This is right up your alley, brother. You're gonna you're gonna enjoy this. Trust me. <laughs> you know, shoe keys in it. All right, Corey, you in? Did the did the you know did help with the action? Trust me, you're gonna. I was like, really? I was like, all right. So I sat down, started watching it, and I was having a blast. It's 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 got this really goofy, fun vibe about it, and I was having a lot of fun watching it. It wasn't until we get to the axe fight. When we got to the axe fight. In the movie, the whole up to this point, I'm watching the movie like this, hmm. with a little grin on my face, right? Because I'm kind of enjoy I'm enjoying the, the goofiness, <laughs> the fun, right? And then right when the axe fight happens, this is what I did. I went, <laughs> <laughs> like I sat up, and I'm like, "Hey, this guy gets it." I was like, "Wait a minute, this actor, he gets it. He understands the movement and the timing." Of this style of fight, fight choreography, it blew me away. I did not know he had any martial arts skill at all, or or he was, you know, had the athleticism. I did not know the actor had that. So I was really, really pleasantly surprised uh, by by the whole film. Uh, Yuki is great. Uh, she's always fun. I mean, she's fun and gorgeous, and many other movies, especially so close. At first, I was concerned because there is there is something called this is a thing. When sexy becomes annoying. <laughs> That's the thing, believe it or not. And I was like, oh, God, please. I like quiet. <laughs> he likes quiet and sexy. Yeah, I was just kind of like, oh, no, I hope she just is not. I'm just going to scream the whole movie. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily, that didn't happen. And uh, they had some good chemistry a little bit later, and they had fun as well. Uh, but, yeah, it, it took me back. Right off the bat, when I put this verses together, I was like, oh, beekeeper. Ah. Beekeeper, easy. And then I haven't watched this in forever, and I recently rewatched it, and I'm like, well, now, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> damn it. Now I don't know what I'm going to choose. So it's going to be interesting. But yeah, overall, really enjoy Transporter. A lot of fun. I do have a nitpick. I do have a nitpick. Um, the finale, there's some great stunt work with the truck, but I kind of feel the movie ran out of steam right after. Uh, the oil slick fight. I feel the movie just, even when the movie, I felt the same way I did the, when I watched it the first time. I was like, oh, it's over. Like as soon as they pulled the truck over and opened up the door, it, it's over. Oh, I was like, oh, oh. Because I was expecting a big, you know, a bigger in fight finale. And the, and the main villain in the movie, he kind of fucked up uh, Statham and looked at him. And Statham looked up at him surprised that he got his ass kicked. I was waiting for him to get his back. And he kind of really didn't. They had a little scuffle in the truck, and then he had a really lame death. I was like, come on, man. You're going to throw him out of the truck? He's got to get ran over. But oops, I oh, PG-13. Mm -hmm. So I was like, eh. Let so, me just uh, add, in the original cut, he was run over. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Oh. That's unfortunate. <laughs> but and The rest of the world saw him run over. America, we saw him just fall mm -hmm. out. Oh, does anybody know if there's an uncut Blu-ray or DVD? Somewhere? There is, and I'll send you. I'll send you some connections for that. All right, awesome. That's awesome. But yeah, still love the movie. Still a lot of fun. Great fights. Uh, just you know, kind of, kind of 
you know, ran out of steam at the end there. All right. Next up, we'll go to John. John, thoughts on the transporter? Uh, things you liked and what you didn't like about it? Uh, so, I, well, you said a lot of what was on my mind. So, but I, I'm I right what there. Was like that? the only time I did not, um, like I didn't really know Jason Statham. I had not seen Lock, Stock, and Tube Smoking Barrels or uh, Snatch, and. I was like, I saw him in the one with Jet Li, and he didn't. Yeah. He he seemed like all rigid in that movie, like in terms of the action and everything. Yeah. So, funny story, like when the transport came out, I, I didn't put the two together. I was like, that's the same guy, and I'm like, holy cow, because then like he's in the transporter, and he's like, you know, Jackie Chan, like moving all over the place and stuff like that. So I was like, who the hell is this? And I went back, and I was like, that's that guy. And then Ghost of Mars, you know, he was in, but you know, he had the unceremonious death. I talked to Owen about it, you know, <laughs> on one of his shows. And um, so yeah, so that it, it's kind of cool because like I watched it again today, and like you, I had not seen it in like at least a couple years i have I, I hadn't busted out and i actually watched them both back to back i watched the transporter and then the beekeeper afterwards nice. and nice. It, it's yeah so of course i'm not gonna talk about beekeeper right now but it's a fun movie i mean it's pg-13 and a lot of people hate that you know yeah. you know pg-13 action movies but i had fun with it and i wasn't expecting it to be such a martial arts heavy heavy action mm -hmm. movie i thought it was going to be more of a shoot 'em up and you know there was a little bit of shooting but not really and i love the ending i love the the, like the oil slick fight you know i thought he was like playing homage to jackie you know and doing i mean not so much with the comedy but just like you know with with the choreography and everything and i just remember sitting in the theater going wow this this guy has got it and i knew it right away when i saw the movie i was like this guy if he plays his cards right is it's gonna be the next action star and it's like yeah and you got Corey Yoon brought in and you got the Hong Kong flavor to it. So, I mean, in terms of the two, it's like this, this one's like more stylized. It's got, it's got, it's like, it's like, it's, it's prettier. I, 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 that's what I was thinking when I was watching, I was like, wow, this is, this is like a, a, a pretty action movie in terms of the stylish, the way they choreographed it and the way they were doing everything with it. And I just had a bunch of fun with it when I saw it and the rest is history. I'm a huge Jason Statham fan because of it. Like I said, I had only really seen him in the one with Jet Li and he didn't really, I didn't even remember him in that movie. I had to go back and be like, oh, that's the same guy, you know? So yeah. I had a lot of, I had a lot of fun with it, but nice. in terms, in terms of nitpicking, I mean, I wasn't a fan of Shuki. I mean, I am a fan, don't get me wrong. But in this movie, I mean, she, it just seemed kind of forced, you know? And then of course she's like, oh, let me thank you by having sex with you. I'm like, oh, that's okay. That's, that was awfully nice of her. <laughs> but okay. I mean, it's fun. It's fun. It's like, Things that never happen in real life, you know. So it's like, so I mean, she was okay. And Matt Schultz, who's in the Fast and Furious, the first couple of Fast and Furious movies, mm. he 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 was just over the top. And I was just like, come on! Like he hands Stath in the package, and then he does this with his hand. And he, I'm like, I'm like, you're just weird. And he was just, and the way he the way he acted and the way he talked in the movie, I was like, this guy, this guy's just a loser, you know. It's like, and it, there was no formidable opponent, you know. Yeah. I mean, in terms of the big guy that he fought right. you know in the oil slip yeah, fight yeah, yeah. but other than that it's like yeah so in terms of villains you're kind of like eh, you know and then like i said shuki she got better as the movie went along but if i had to nitpick that would probably be my negatives to the movie but it, it's it's 99 positives for me because I, right. I just enjoy the movie copy that all right nubis yeah so uh when I first got introduced to stay them, it had to be Snatch and, of course, his small appearance in Ghost of Mars, a horror film, of course. So, <laughs> obviously, that's where I'm going to find him there. But Transporter kind of changed the whole dynamic of that. Um, as John was pointing out, it's very stylized. I love that Frank is, like, <clears throat> very intelligent and uh, precise about what he wants, like, specific amount of kilos, the, the opening scene with the bank robbers. You know, he's like, look, I'm not going anywhere until we've agreed the contracts, but they like pop the dude in the head, pop him out, and then get moving. So, uh, yeah, uh, the action is great. The choreography is great. Uh, I was going to say it earlier, but Rick was like, hey, just hold on. Tell us when you're doing this. I'm like, so uh, I think it is it Shu Ki? Is that how you pronounce her name, the girl? Uh, I didn't realize till just not too long ago that she's also in a favorite martial arts film of mine called The Storm Riders from 98 with Sonny Chiba. Uh, I love that film immensely. So, like, I was kind of pleasant surprised. I go, oh, yeah, okay, I can see it now. It's been a while since I've seen it, but, uh, yeah. So, yeah, the film is amazing. I love it from start to finish. Um, I do think 
I agree with Preston a little bit that, you know, towards the end, you, you kind of think it's going to kind of be over, and then there's like a little bit more drama at the end there. But it does kind of nicely close out the film, which is, is good. You know, I don't think it's as good as the ending to like the second one or the third one, but it's still decent enough, I think. All right. All right. Billy. Uh, yeah, I remember Transporter coming out and my first initial reaction after the trailer was like, the dude from Snatch is going to be like martial arts fighting. Like I, I like him in Snatch and I liked him in Lockstock, but I don't know about this. So, so I was really skeptical mm -hmm. and it came out like, you know, early 2000s, which was like the silly bonds and the triple X's and the fast and furious movies. So all the action stuff was, was becoming a little glossier, a little sillier. And so you see stuff like him dodging, like using the, the pan to swipe away a rocket. And I was like, all right, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> this shot um, right here. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Like accurately know. represents the entire movie. You should have kept that. I but know. I think I remember also being in the theater, and once it gets to the the third act, where it's just like action sequence, action sequence, fight scene, you know, um, all this stuff, and like all this stuff, him taking his shirt off, and I was like, well, that's cool. Well, that's cool. Well, this is cool. Okay, now they're fighting in between buses. That's cool. And I just sort of realized, like, oh, this is. I was really a big fan of Rumble in the Bronx at this time too, and I used to watch that all the time. And I was like, oh. This is they're doing that kind of thing. They're just doing action. I'm in. <laughs> so I as soon as I sort of adjusted my expectations for it, I was like, all right, now I get it and I really like it. Um, I think, you know, I haven't seen it probably in 10 years or more. So it was really nice to go back and be like, oh, this is a little different than Triple X, Fast and the Furious. It's not just glossy. They do have style and like they found an action star in this. Um and I, I was watching it with my wife and she hadn't seen it forever either. And both of us were just kind of like sitting marveling and like, man, Statham performs these fight scenes so well. Just all mm -hmm. the little close-ups of him, all the little like the quick hand movements, like he just sells them so well. Um, and then <laughs> quick story, I was walking uh, down the street in Beverly Hills one day and Jason Statham was walking toward me. And I swear to God, he was walking like this. Just like, wow. <laughs> I was like are, you, are you gonna fight someone right now? <laughs> like, he, looked, he just looked like he was gonna fight someone. I was like, I get it, I get it. Um, but yeah, he's got I a mean, rep, he's got a rep. Yeah, he's, if anyone sees me right now, they gotta know I'm ready to fight. Uh, but but I mean, I, I loved it watching it again, and you you realize why Statham is Statham. Uh, and you realize why this spawned a whole franchise. I mean, we're still talking about transporter projects, I think, because of the style that they took. Um, so all the all the silliness and all the sort of cheesiness. Um, I don't know. I really like I love how simple the plot is too. Like how just how simple the story is. Uh because you can hang a lot on a really simple story. And yeah. um, that's ex I feel like that's exactly what they did. So yeah, and, and you can tell with, with the people involved, like Luke Besson writing the script and um Pia Morel, who directed Take the first taken, I think was the cinematographer on this and you can just kind of see all of that like early talent in these guys mm. copy that all right james so yeah i i remember uh when this was first announced thinking i was right because when i went when i saw a snatch i saw like state and like man, this guy make a great action star like and then you know it shows up in the one like okay as a co-star and then the transporter gets uh announced like, Yes, I was totally right on it. But watching it again, like, it's really cool because he's a blank canvas here. And you see him do stuff. Some of the stuff he does in this movie, you never see him do it again. Like, a lot of the fight choreography I noticed, especially the kicking, mm -hmm. you never see him do that stuff. That jump split kick, never again. Mm -hmm. the, a lot of, like, the, the, the spinning kicks with uh, when he's got, like, the bike pedals on his feet, you never yeah. see anything like that again. He kind of he kind of like very quickly realized, yeah, I'm a, I'm a like better with fists. Um, you know, it, it was also neat because he's like, he's got this youthful cockiness to him. Whereas now he's kind of like perma scowls. Like, yeah, he's got that Statham scowl here. He's like grinning more. He's kind of like, you know, younger, cockier. Even when he's like telling the, the bank robbers in the beginning, explaining to them why you can't have four people like you, like you told me, the weight's specific, 
you know, because like got my shocks, got my tires, got my gas. And that was really neat because we've been seeing him kind of like old and grizzled for at least the last decade now. So it was kind of nice to see him like still kind of getting into that groove. But the one thing that really feels like Proto is Frank Martin basically kind of being this borderline OCD action hero. Like everything is meticulous. Everything is in its place. His house is immaculate. His car is showroom. You know, everything about his life. That house is amazing, by the way. I wanted to live in that house and build it. <laughs> I found out it was just a model. Um, and you, you can see that, like, that character would keep going throughout his career up into, like, Deckard Shaw and even the Beekeeper. Like, it's that same kind of, like, very almost zen in how meticulous he is. Um but as far as as far as nitpicks go, and I, I do have, I, I I have quite a few. I um, the fights were a lot shakier than I remember them being. I remember them being a lot. Like you remember stuff like, oh, the axe fight's very clearly shot, or mm -hmm. the bit where he's like holding three guys and like you know basically kicking through all three of them. That's great. That's like really clear and clean. But there's a lot of moments in this, especially the fight against the big guy. That's still like shaky and it's like chopped all the hell and it's like what what happened here like did they it, it really like the, it doesn't have it doesn't flow as well as it could um and i also agree like after that oil fight the movie basically runs out of steam but it really feels like all the memorable action most of it is like it's in the last 20 minutes when he gets to the container the, the container yard and then the bus depot that's like yeah. the big, that's what everyone remembers outside of the, the axe fight. And those, that's great. But I was really surprised. Like, yeah, this is most of the memorable action doesn't happen until this. And then there's still like 15 minutes of movie after. Um, so like they really could, like, I really kind of wish he'd have gotten a better end fight with Matt Schultz. Like, I think that could have been, that, that could have really yeah. made it work better. Yes. I agree. But, but yeah, like Shuki, fantastic. Francois Berlion as uh, the inspector, also great. But he like stayed them as great chemistry with all of them. Mm -hmm. um, this was kind of like this first Europa Corps. Europa Corps kind of did this a lot <laughs> after this. Like they would bring this random, like really great actor in who's not known for action movies, and we'll give them this kind of kind of stock action script and see what happens. So you get stuff like the transporter, and you get stuff like Taken because it's like. Who was putting Liam Neeson in action movies before Europa Corps decided that was a good idea? And recently they had like Henry Golding in uh, Assassin's, uh, Assassin's Club, I think. So there's still. Uh, I haven't yikes. seen it. Yikes. Huh? Yikes. But yeah, go ahead, James. <laughs> oh, it's, it's one of those. Okay. It's, it's like, a yikes. Hey, success rate's on 100%. But yeah, like, it, it's like, oh, Transport, we got like three movies, you got two sequels, a prequel, and a TV series taken, two sequels, a. And a TV series, it's kind of like when these things work, they milk it to death. Right. But, right. Yeah. It was just kind of it's kind of neat seeing like you know blank canvas state them and seeing like what what stuck and what kind of developed and also what kind of what he kind of left behind. But it really felt like he put himself into Corey Yun's hands. It's like, look, it's like I don't. It's my first time doing this, um, and he he you know embraced that but afterward you can really see he's um he learned really quickly like here is what i excel at here's what i need to focus on and the beekeeper is like the culmination of all copy that copy that all right thrash oh hold on thrash hold on james yes. uh the inspector didn't he come back and uh, reprise his role in this in the series yeah, yeah, he was in like all three movies and the series. The, the, the series, right? Okay, yeah, that, that's kind of fun. All right, Thrash. Well, one thing I'm glad you mentioned the inspector because I thought he was one of the more intriguing characters, and I did. I loved the chemistry between him and uh, Jason. I wanted uh, to hang out with him. I wanted to yeah. hey, come on in, man. Let's have a cup yeah. of coffee. Go for espresso <laughs> and a croissant. Yeah. You know, he, he reminded me a lot of 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 um um. Oh, uh, other Luc Besson uh, discovery uh, from Le Dernier Combat. Um, Jean Renault. He reminded yeah. me of that sort of very Jean Renault, the way he carried himself. And But that was just me. But 
Anywho, again, um, it's Luke Besson and uh, Bob Kamen, so you're going to get a comic book movie. In fact, their big collaboration was, of course, The Fifth Element. Great comic book movie. This is a comic book movie. Um, a lot of action, a lot of fun. It's a roller coaster. No, there's not a lot of plot. Uh, thank you, Billy. Uh, in fact, they even find a great way to get around that. His whole professionalism is... He doesn't want extra details. He doesn't want superfluous information. So anytime they try to give him more, he, he puts the kibosh on it. So it explains the fact that there's not a huge plot, no huge plot, no huge plot holes. So you can just enjoy the gosh darn movie, which is what you want to do with an action film. I thought he did a great job. I, too, that scene where he's fighting on the bicycle uh, pedals in the mm -hmm. grease, that... That actually, I wish that had been the climactic fight scene. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I understand the, the whole point of a human trafficking film is you have to thwart the human traffickers. So you really need the scene with that container, but it does sort of limp to the barn. Oh, and also, come on, and this is my nitpick. He outruns a plane so he can commandeer it? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> and then he's flying the plane in, or the pilot, as I should say, and everyone all sort of looks up at once. Oh. Uh, I, I noticed that. <laughs> how, I was like, how, how did they, they even know? know? Was... I mean, how did they know? He's then he, he jumps out of the plane, and he looks like, <laughs> how high up is he? It's like, I can see half of friends when he jumps out of that plane. He's so, he's so high up, and yet everyone's yeah. like watching yeah. him come down. Yeah, one second he's treetop level, next thing he's at 3,500 feet. Well, which is it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, come it's on. <laughs> Space and time are weird in these movies. <laughs> and I I kept waiting I kept waiting for him to land on the wrong container. <laughs> <laughs> I go watch they're going to open that container up it's going to be empty. Ha <laughs> ha plot twist. Oh. Um but no, I'm glad that didn't happen. Yeah. But again, it's just it's a it's a fun movie. Um it's topical the the concept of the human trafficking problem is Still quite relevant. Um, I thought the cast all did a, a very optimum job. Um, again, the only criticism I do have of it, there are a lot of what I call um, uh, little plot conveniences that mm. are like just, oh, come on. Like early on, that opening segment, which we find out afterwards, is completely superfluous. It's just to establish his character. But come on, he jumps the car off a bridge onto a car carrier which just happens to be coming down the street i he's mean just, he's just that good thrash yes. <laughs> i mean i mean I, I heard it i heard it years ago from an old um uh college professor who, who taught script writing and he goes audiences will accept the impossible before the improbable that was very improbable so and i think i think they do ask us to accept a lot but it's such a fun film you know what? What the heck? I accept. Yeah, there. Copy that. Copy that. Well said, Thrash. And yeah, you. This is one of those movies you kind of have to turn your brain off to to enjoy it, which is perfectly fine. I do that all the time sometimes. But it's you can really nitpick and ask a lot of <laughs> questions for a lot of things. Like how how did a tied up to a chair shoe key get into the yes. back seat of the car? That's impressive. Yes. That was, I'm just going to be like, right? she's got skills. She's got skills we didn't really get to see. Exactly. And yep. she, she picked the right car. How many cars were on that estate? <laughs> and she just happens to get to the one he's going to steal. <laughs> she knew his <laughs> chasing vehicles at that point. <laughs> <laughs> you oh just got to roll with it, baby. Just got to roll you with do. it. You do. You do. You got to roll. Go for it, Owen. Oh. Uh, yeah, I hadn't watched this movie for several years and uh, forgot uh, a lot that happened in it. But uh, what I liked about it was that uh, it came out at a time when just after 9-11 and there weren't really action heroes anymore. It was kind of a thing that was done. It was like Bourne came along and, you know, did its thing. But this was sort of like an old school 80s style badass, which we just didn't really see much anymore of. And that's what really sort of drew me to it. Um, it's got that sense of fun and silliness, which you rarely got in the 2000s. Like I said, everything was going more serious and uh, introspective for several years. But this just kept that just bright, colorful uh, silliness to it. Fun action scenes. I liked Statham. Like everyone else, you know, we were like, who the hell is this guy? This guy's an action star. This is awesome. <laughs> uh, and we just loved actually just seeing like an action star again. Because like even Stallone at that point wasn't straight to DVD land. Uh, at that point, and uh, Arnie, I think, was the governor about that time or whatever. 
Um, so it was nice just to see like a new action star appear, which there, there weren't many of at the time. Um, so yeah, I agree with everybody else. I enjoyed the fight scenes. I love the uh, the the oil fight scene, and uh, I do think that the, there should have been a final proper fight scene. Yep. Uh, I think that just just to tidy things up, but. Uh, Wee! <laughs> Best gift ever. Amazing. Uh, Amazing. But yeah, uh, I, I have a very soft spot. I mean, without the transporter, there wouldn't be a beekeeper or anything else. So uh, it, it's it's important that way. So that's all I'll say. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Rick. Oh, me already. Okay. Well, um, at the time, I was completely into kung fu. And I, I was already there. Yeah, really. I was beginning. <laughs> I was beginning to tire of um, the fisticuffs, uh, as opposed to the more fluid work. But it's very interesting that you can tell the pros from the amateurs. The inspector and Statham were pros. That's why their scenes work so well. They knew what they were doing, they knew what their goal was, they knew what they wanted to do, they knew what they didn't want to do, and they and they treated it seriously. They played the parts. He wasn't cracking smiles. I mean, even the scenes where Shu Ki is throwing herself at him, I could tell that if it was Statham by himself, he would go, no, I'm not having sex with you because I'm not going to be, you know, I can have sex with anybody I want anytime I want, and I'm not going to cave for you. And you could also tell the amateurs, which is the guy who was playing Shuki's father, the villain. They just decided, oh, look at this delicious set. I'm going to chew on it. Yes. I'm going to chew the scenery. Yes. While Statham's going, I don't do this. And that's the thing that I love about Statham. Statham became, has become my favorite martial arts actor. He's not a kung fu actor. He's a martial arts actor. But what's the great thing about Statham, and you can see it progress, is that if he doesn't want to do it, it doesn't get done. They, you know, after this movie, you know, you were, I forgot who, um, somebody alluded to, um, um, oh yeah, that um, he would do, He, I don't think he was in Corey Yun's hands. I think Corey Yun wanted him to do stuff and he didn't want to do the stuff that Corey wanted him to do. I believe that he may have done and the same thing with the dialogue. They may have had all sorts of dialogue for him, and he may have done a Clint Eastwood, which is what you know Eastwood did in The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. I'm not going to say that. And so suddenly he became monosyllabic. And I think Jason Statham is the same thing. It probably wasn't – he probably decided, I'm not going to say that, so I am going to be terse. Also, it was interesting to see – it's always interesting to see – Corey Yun, you know, I've met Corey Yun and I've talked to him and all this other stuff. And it's always fun to see Hong, that him trying to bring Hong Kong style into Western movies, or in this case, European movies, French films. And, you know, and basically what happens with Jackie Chan and with Corey Yun, and with Yun Wu Ping and all these guys is, especially in the golden age of Kung Fu films, they would come to the set and they would decide what to do. They see what their set was, who he was dealing with. Well, let's try this. Let's try this. And you can see one of the thing. I like the first half of this film much more than the second half. When suddenly all the explosions start and all the major fights start, there's some, you know, the oil one was great. but And this, the axe one was great. But then everybody starts playing fast and loose. The special effects guys, the set decorators, the uh, and Corey. I mean, that whole fight in the um, containers, he borrowed from himself from, uh, what was it, Blonde Fury in 1989, where Cynthia Rothrock is fighting Vincent Lynn in the containers. And, you know, I said, oh, I know exactly where that shot came from. Oh, I'm just going to recycle this for Jason now. And at the end, you know, you were talking about the plane and all the rest of it. There are things that happen on the truck that even... Indiana Jones would, would go, oh, come on. <laughs> you know, suddenly metal turned into plastic and would break when it, it would be. All sorts of things were happening. That, and by that time, at the end of the movie, I was going, oh, I'm sorry you guys gave up. I'm so sorry you just gave up. And um, 
and also, you know, Jason Statham and the inspector was in one movie. Everybody else was in another movie. It was still entertaining, no question. And I noticed, you know, I didn't pick up on his action. I picked up on Statham's energy. I sort mm -hmm. of went, I'm, this is a guy to watch. Because I've always wanted, you know, somebody who, who spoke to me. And he spoke to me. And thankfully, he maintained his conversation, except for some of those really awful uh, European ones that I forgot that really the worst director of all time made with him. He did two movies for that terrible, terrible director in Europe. I've forgotten his name. Louis Ball? Yeah. Louis Louis Ball. Ball. Yeah. No, yeah. Ball. yeah, yeah. And the name of the yeah. king. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, I just felt for him when I watched him during that. I saw that in theater, by oh, the way. So did as I. A, as, a I challenge, as a challenge hate watch. Yeah. And because from the trailer, I just, once I saw Ray Liotta dodge <laughs> back with his eyes open yeah. as the sorcerer wizard, I was like, we have to go see this. this hopefully, this <laughs> unfortunately, it, it was bad, bad. But Well, I, well I'll tell you <laughs> how I felt. I mean, ultimately, how I felt about Transporter. What the only thing I would need to say is I never saw the sequels. Oh man! Wow! Me neither. Okay. Me neither. The They're good. Yeah. They're good. Yeah. Well, good. I'll take I'll take your word for it because I have them available to me. I'll watch them if I have some time. Yeah. I want to I want to revisit them, but I I remember them being good and bad. <laughs> I had issues with two and three, but there was there was some kick ass stuff in two and three for sure. Um, uh, but yeah, well said, Rick. Oh, really quick. Um, yeah. Rewatching it, I kept seeing Cyril Raphael. Raphael. Yes. Cyril. I, I, I kept seeing him. And uh, and he got chipped. Some of the... Let me tell you. He yeah, throws like one, one kick and then like he, like, yeah. and he... I was like, that's it? I was like... Yeah. Oh, but it was fun seeing him pop up. Yeah, it was. Kiss, Kiss of the Dragon and yeah. uh, District B13. Oh, that was cool seeing that. Yeah. Uh, but oh, yeah. You trans... know what? Can, oh, I, what? can I throw one more nitpick out there? And I think sure. we're all going to agree on this one. This yes. was like a, it almost ruined the movie for me. The way that he makes ramen was offensive. <laughs> <laughs> I, was so, I actually have a note in here that's like, I disapprove of how he makes this ramen. <laughs> Copy that. It was um, his statement. It was his statement yeah, for working yeah, yeah, with a Chinese yeah. crew. I'm yeah. only going half in, going in the yeah. microwave. <laughs> But yeah, uh, with all our nitpicks, we all agree that this movie's a lot of fun. Because look at this. We <laughs> we it's fun. Oh it's fun. <laughs> but yeah, definitely, Rick, you said uh, that, that fight really had a Jackie Chan vibe to it. It so wasn't there Jackie wasn't there a fight where Gordon Liu put oil yep. on him? And he yes. was it was yeah. in um Heroes of the East, correct? Right. Yeah, he put uh, oil on him or something on him. Yeah. And, uh, the judo guy couldn't grab him. Yeah, so. right. Yeah, yeah. It's I will say that uh, Statham, like, is is an actor, like, and maybe Rick will agree or anybody. Uh, he has like this dry sense of humor that just really works. Yeah, yeah. So every time he's, he's kind of like a sarcastic uh, comedic value. <laughs> but let me say, he's not an actor. He's <laughs> he's a performer, and he's performer. Ex he's eight. He's there's nobody better at being Jason Statham than he is. Than Jason Statham, and that's all I need him to be. Right. No, I, I just mean. learned that he was a diver. He was a diver. Oh before. yeah. Oh I my God. No idea. He was a driver. Really? Like, he diver. puts on a. <laughs> he puts on a. If you want to, if you want to connect the two movies we're talking about, they put. He put at the end. He puts on the scuba suit. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. To get Anub away. Anubis, let's do a transporter films ranked video. Let's do it. Let's do it. That'll give me an excuse Definitely. to rewatch all of them. And I've never actually seen Refueled. Are we, are we, are we throwing... uh, you can pass that. You can pass that one. <laughs> <laughs> Based on what I've seen, I'm going to have to go with number one is number one. <laughs> Based on what yeah. I've seen. It'll give, it just gives me an excuse to watch the other two and have fun talking yeah, about it. I, I got you. Billy, got you. Billy, are we going to have to review Ghost of Mars? <laughs> oh, listen. I Let's would do look. it. I Let's feel like I have it. a lot to say. I oh, haven't seen it in movie. like 15 years. I saw that. <laughs> I watched it the theater. other day. <laughs> I saw that in theater. Yes. Oh, man. Me too. Uh, I did. Let's I do, I let's do Robin been. Crusoe on Mars instead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, the beekeeper. Go ahead, Billy. All right. Oh. Special guest. Star. He's also deaf, so we can swear around him. He's fine. Uh, I, have my, uh, I, I have my kitty cat walking around here. If you hear any noises, that's that's. Yeah, I got two of them, so if they pop up, you'll know. So good. 
All right. So Beekeeper, uh, one man's brutal campaign for vengeance takes on national stakes after he is revealed to be a former operative of a powerful and clandestine organization known as Beekeepers. Yeah, Beekeeper. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a mouthful. <laughs> All right. Yes. I have a really quick funny story. So um, <laughs> uh, shout out to my brother from another mother, filmmaker, Matt Merritt from Keep Forward Productions. Um, he's, he's like me. He loves, he loves us some Stath. And, uh, he was just like, dude, I, I can't, I, I don't know, man, I can't do this anymore, man. After Expendables four and the Meg two, I, I'm, I, I, I miss, I miss, I miss the Statham that I know and love. Like, what is this? What the and Huey Bowl one? Huh? Oh yeah. The, the Huey Bowl one? He misses that? <laughs> <laughs> well, the good movies when Statham made cut, good. Cut actors. State some slack. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, he he was just like down in the dumps. He's like, I really miss you know Statham making good action movies, and literally <laughs> the very next day, the very next day, the trailer for the Beekeeper <laughs> drops, and I sent that to him. And he was like, Oh my God, Jason Statham heard me. This looks amazing, <laughs> and it was so funny. We couldn't stop laughing. I was like, Dude, this looks legit. So. Uh, I had to go see this in theater. I had a blast. And, and during the, my review, with uh, re, me and James reviewed this. Uh, I think I said during my review, I'm sitting there in theater and I'm just, I had a smile on my face. And I'm looking up and I'm like, ah, this is why we love action movies. That was what was going through my mind in the theater watching The Beekeeper. I was like, yes, satisfaction, being rewarded. The audience being rewarded, giving us villains to hate, seeing them get the shit kicked out of them, giving us a likable lead. And I'm sitting there just like, yes, this is why. This is why we're fans. This is why we like this kind of stuff. <laughs> so I, I had a, a great time uh, watching Beekeeper, man. Loved the fights. Loved it. Loved every, you know, little things like this. <laughs> <laughs> like that little scene. Thing. I love that scene. Yeah. Like little things like this. I'm like, yes, yes. More, please. More, please. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I can't really think of that much to nitpick as of right now. I'll see what you guys have to say. Um, I, I, I guess just to, just throw, just to be a little nitpicky, <laughs> I enjoyed the other beekeepers showing up at the gas station. <laughs> yes, it was great. And I, this was a great scene. This was wild. Was. Yeah. And, uh, I, I wanted to see like two more, like two more other, uh, beekeepers, beekeepers show yeah. up to fight him. But that, that's just me being nitpicky. Wait, wait till the sequel. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The sequel. Yeah. Yeah. There'll wait be an army of beekeepers. Yeah. The beekeepers. Right. Yeah. He's yeah. going to be taking on the beekeepers. Exactly. Exactly. The killer <laughs> hornet. Yeah. <laughs> the queen now slayers. This, now, this is debatable, uh, but there is some criticism for a lot of martial art actors. Uh, I am fans of Steven Seagal's early work. I'm a huge fan of Michael Jai White. But Statham and those two, and you can name some others if you'd like, some of them, uh, critically, some fans and some non-fans will say they love watching them when they're badass, they enjoy them, but they never get hurt. They never get beat up. And that's just a that's just a criticism that I've heard people say. <clears throat> both of them, I, know, I got some that. words for that, though. Yeah, yeah. Me too. <laughs> right? But what's cool is once we get to this fight, baby, yeah. oh, man. <laughs> Oh, Statham gets it. Yeah, he, and he does. gets. He has a difficult time. Like he barely wins this fight, and I'm just like, yes. So shut up, critics. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that, that is a, fight. That is a thing. Did that fight remind anyone else of Arnold's fight with Bennett in the end of Commando? Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I you know, it was like that. it was like an homage. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. yeah. Blow off some steam. Blow off some steam. steam. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. John? Yeah. I'm going to shoot you between the eyes, John. Oh, you're talking. Oh, I, was like, I, was like, I was like, yes. Love the beekeeper. Check out me and James' full long spoiler review uh, here on the channel with Matt as well. All right, John. Well, you could just read my review on my website. You could just see how much of a love fest I have with this movie. But listen, like the like I was telling you before we started, like this is the culmination. Like we got the beginning of Jason Statham, and then we got the culmination of Jason Statham. And the way I look at it, and I, I was thinking about this today after I watched both of them side by side, 
Adam Clay is Frank Martin on steroids. He there's a little bit of Adam <clears throat> Clay in, or I mean uh, Frank Martin in Adam Clay. Not as bad in terms of the OCD and everything, but his routines and this and that. And he's this is just him on another level. I can't say enough good things about this movie. I mean, I I like I was writing my review and I was like, I got I got to find something bad to talk about. I forget what it was, <laughs> but I'm going to go with villains again. I mean, aside from him finding the South African guy at the end, like, you know, Josh Hutcherson, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, it, I just like how he's on the phone with Josh Hutcherson. And I talked to this about with Owen, like all through the movie and like, he's trying to act tough. And he's like, he, because like when he's talking to him, he's like, he's like, Josh Hutcherson is like, Mr. Fuck you, that's who. And you could just see Statham like, yeah, I can't wait till I get my hands on you. <laughs> but the beekeeper, like, Sometimes, and this goes back to those critics, you just need your action hero to be just the ultimate badass. And, like, yep. you just want him, like, and we talked about this, too. Like, the bad guys are so vile and so depraved, and they're the lowest form of scum. I mean, mm -hmm. like, it's like pedophiles and these guys. It's like, you know, take your pick on a, any given Sunday. And, yes, and you, and you just love how he's just so in control of every situation. He goes in, he just casually goes up to the secretary. He's like... He's like, I'm gonna burn the place down, and she's like, uh, okay, thank you for telling me. And then she's like, it tells yeah, like she's gonna get the hell out of here. Or like with the guards at the uh, in the front of him, you know, he's like, one, two, three, there, I did it for you. You know, he's just in total control, and he, this is like Steven Seagal, but even on another level. Every Steven Seagal movie, he was this like this former ultimate badass like he was a cook but yes he was a navy seal or yeah. he was this but he was a delta force operative he was this or you know oh, but oh, here he's a beekeeper now everybody's like what the fuck is a beekeeper well ladies and gentlemen <clears throat> the beekeeper they're so bad that when you mention them everybody goes <gasps> and they're just yeah. and, and like yeah. like and the best part jeremy irons is like great in this movie because his lines like he's talking to all these delta force and navy seals and he calls them pussies. It's like in, in regards to this guy you're going to be fighting, you're all pussies. And they just all look at him and everything. <laughs> but the action, like where the transporter is stylized, like more Hong Kong flavor. This is just in your face, hit you over the head, blunt force trauma. Like he just, yeah, he just, he walks up to FBI agents and he just, and that scene where he's tearing those guys up and it, it reminded me of Jeff Speakman in The Perfect Weapon when they try to steal his wallet. It's so say he just, he goes around in a circle and he just like takes everybody out in the blink of an eye. And he is just badass from start to finish. Yes, the South African actually did some damage to him. And you know, you're like, ooh, like what's going on here? And then he loses his leg and he's hopping on one leg and he's still kicking Jason Statham's <laughs> ass. I'm like, that's talent right there. His but, flesh wound. Just the flesh wound. That's right. Right. He got shot in the face. He stabs him where he got shot in the face. And they, this guy is just like the Energizer Bunny. But going back to the movie itself, this is like, I, I love the transporter. But when you watch it with the beekeeper, the transporter is like Mickey Mouse Club compared to this movie. It's just like, this is, this is why we love action movies. It's a hard R-rated action movie that thank the ever-loving Jesus it made money because, yes, yes People want to see this shit. They don't always want to go see Marvel Studio movies. They don't always want to go see rom -com. Stop it, stop it, stop it. I want to see both. I want to see both. No, don't get me wrong. I mean, well, in my current state, I'm And by the way, this is, it isn't shit. That's why it was successful. Yes. yes. Okay, okay. Very good point, yes. When we get yes. to me, I'll, I'll lay it right. all out for you. When it's <laughs> but, I think Listen. Rick's, Rick's yeah. trying to say is people want to see good okay Marvel yeah movies. yes i did not yes when it's done well yes this is what can happen ladies and gentlemen and this brought me back to a time when i went to the movie theater in the 80s and yeah. i saw sylvester stallone in rambo first blood part two because that's when i started going to see r-rated action movies in the oh, years I'm jealous i'm jealous my, well yeah my i was like 15 14 15 and my parents were like oh, as yep. long as, you know it just makes me laugh as long as there was no sex in it but they were okay with them chopping guys heads off but they're like yeah as long as they're not having sex with anybody <laughs> Go for it, John. I'm like, Thank it's fun. You. Yeah, absolutely. And it just brought me back to a time. And like you said, Statham is one of the last action heroes there is right now. Yes, he he's just he walks into a room and he just radiates. You know, I'm Jason Motherfucking Statham. It's like, what no are you gonna do about it? Exactly. <laughs> and like watching these two movies, and this is the last thing I'll say. It's just their bookends. They're like. This is the culmination of Statham's career. And he's in his 50s now. 
And H is just a number, people, because he's moving better than he was in the transporter. Not that he wasn't moving good in the transporter, but he was kicking some major serious ass in this movie. And the fight choreography, you can't beat. Like, if you're going to take PG-13 fight choreography and hard R-rated fight choreography, I'm always going to go with the hard R-rated fight choreography. Because you could get away with a lot more. You could have a lot more fun with it. And I was laughing watching this movie, but in a good way. I was with my my daughter. She's 16, so she's starting to watch these movies now with me. And I was yes. just, we were just laughing together. And I just would roll over to her and I'd be like, this 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 is the greatest movie I've ever seen. Well, at least this year, because it's just like, and it just made, it just reinvented my love for Jason Statham. So yeah, well said, well said. Nubis. Uh, Preston, did I tell you that I saw the predator in theaters? I don't know if I rubbed that in (gasps) enough. (laughs) Uh, Now, uh, the beekeeper was interesting because I didn't watch the trailer. I didn't watch any reviews. I knew that samurai had done it and a few others, but, I came in not knowing anything about the film, um, and Neko and I sat down and watched it last night. The one difference that right off the bat between Transporter and this one is that we've all agreed Transporter is like this popcorn fun movie. Mm-hmm. Beekeeper, like it's emotionally invested. Like the minute we mm-hmm. lose Rashad due to like some scummy ass dickheads, we're already invested in this. We're like, okay. We know what this guy can do. Now we're going to go watch him do it. And, uh, yeah, I was really, really happy with this film a lot. It was a lot of great stuff. It reminded me of, like, the classic Wick films a little bit. Even, uh, you know, even the old school uh, uh, John Rant, like First Blood and stuff like that. Uh, just a guy going in there, kicking ass, taking names. And as John pointed out again, like, the fact that every time <laughs> someone would say, oh, yeah, he's a beekeeper, they're like, oh, you know, it, it's, almost like, it's almost like Vigo from uh, the first uh, John Wick the one he says, "Yeah, he killed his dog." Oh, no. okay. Yeah, oh. <laughs> now it's like, oh shit. Okay. Um, there is one scene that I just could not stop laughing. I don't know why, but it, it, I think it's when he's going to the second call center. It's after he's beat up the cops and the uh, the other like mercenaries or whatever are trying to make sure he's not going to get up there. And everybody's clapping because the guy in the microphone's like, "Yeah, bye, cops!" And then right next to him, it's like, "Stay!" I'm going, "Yeah." I said, "Oh, he's sneaky bitch." He got right up there next to him. Uh, I thought that was just so funny. Um, and but you know, again, like this movie was very emotionally a- attached with everything that was going on. I liked that part of it. That's why, in this case, it- it's okay if your your hero is kind of like taking dings and and scratches and stuff, like you know Bruce Lee back in the day, or you know, some other hero like Schwarzenegger or whatever, but in the end, you just want him to annihilate people. Like that other beekeeper, he, he messed her up good. <laughs> you know, he just showed her the business, and the, and the rest of the beekeepers like, we're going to be neutral now. We're not going to spend any more people. You know, we're not mini looking driver. to kill all our beekeepers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was Mini Driver. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I haven't uh, seen her in a while. Yeah. I think the yeah. last time I saw her was in Hard Rain. Oh, oh wow! Wow, Owen, that's Owen. Throwback. Have you discussed Hard Rain, sir? Yeah, that was one of our first ever live streams. Oh my wow. goodness! How yeah, fun! Years ago, yeah. And yeah, we, I, I was. On it that wasn't like it was Hard Rain underrated. I think yeah. it was something like that. That's yeah, it. Yeah, we're yeah. doing. That's it. Next verses. We're doing Hard Rain versus Hur- Hurricane Heist. <laughs> yes. Yes. <I> mean, <laughs> it's, it's like spoiler alert. It is underrated. <laughs> so, it is, yeah. It's all about um, high school. If school. I have one gripe. I hate the very end. Like after he's done with the president and everything yes. else, that very end sucks. It like it really sucks, man. I was like, oh, that was a terrible way to go. But that's really the only minor issue I have with the film. The film is a very solid movie, and uh, did it feel like did it feel like rushed? The end. Yeah, of- yeah. I didn't really get the kind of closure that I really wanted from the film. Uh, there was actually a point where I thought. And I don't know if anyone else felt the same way. I thought the the president was actually going to shoot Hutchinson. I thought she was just yeah. going to do everybody a favor yeah. and just shoot her on time. <laughs> that was and I'll tell you this, me. too. I, I'm not a Hutchinson fan as an actor, but when I saw him in The Hunger Games, I wanted to punch him in the face, his character. When I saw him in this, I wanted to punch him in the face. So he does that character very well. <laughs> <laughs> it's good he's casting got, right there. He's got yeah. Scar uh-huh. in the background there. Uh-huh. Scar. Oh my god! Yeah, copy that. All right, Billy. 
All right, I think I might be the odd man out here, but um, Ooh. Uh oh, yeah, uh oh, I well, not to like tip my hand as to how I'm going to vote, but I did not like this movie. Ooh, <laughs> I did it. Wow, from yeah. the be Ooh. from the beginning, I was a little worried. Like, I, I want to start with the things I did like because I okay. it, they're like Statham. Anytime that dude is like moving on camera, I'm in. You know, every every time he's fighting a bunch of people, I'm into it and I love it. Um, I just thought like it's just not for me. Like overall, I was into the idea, like the idea alone, like Statham fights people who scammed his his friend, you know, who was caring for him. That to me, like that's a personal story. That's something like, yes, go fuck them up. Like, go fuck up everyone in that corporation from bottom to the top. Um, and I, I just felt like at every juncture, at every new plot point, I didn't quite know what we were doing in the movie. I didn't know, you know, if the cop was on his side and then she was like she wasn't, and then she was, and then she wasn't again. She was hunting him, and then uh like he's a beekeeper but then there's a, a an organization called beekeepers but he's a literal beekeeper <laughs> and jeremy irons is trying so hard to make this beekeeper metaphor but he's not a bee he's a beekeeper <laughs> so trying to make sense so like i think ultimately like i'm it just was not for me it never i was never on the thread so to speak um interesting and, like, a lot of the fight scenes when I was like, all right, all right. Yeah. We're gearing up for a fight scene. Okay. <clears throat> like when the first time the, uh, after he goes into, uh, burn down the first call center. Right. And then he comes back and they're like, okay, we got him. We're going to go after him. They send a team after him in that bar. I'm like, all right, let's do it. Let's do it. I felt like all that action was confusing for me and I didn't know what was going on. So like he hung that one guy, um, cool but you don't see it it's all like kind of done off camera and quick cuts the thing that really like bugged me though in that scene was he cut that dude's fingers off and i had to like go back and be like wait what just i didn't see what just happened did he cut his hand off did he knock the gun out of his hand like i couldn't tell so i just felt like i was constantly trying to catch up and then i i'd be like a 30 seconds or a minute later be like oh that's what he did yeah that's that was cool and i just never caught on to it um and then so when when the other beekeepers started showing up and they're in like bright purple with huge like mini guns on top of trucks, I was like, what in the Hunger Games craziness is going on now? Like, I didn't know we were watching this kind of movie. Yeah. So like I was on board for Statham beating the shit out of people and like the most satisfying thing, but I just was never satisfied by it. I did love, though, I loved the whole he just shows up in places like he just walks in. He's like, I'm going to burn this place to the ground real quick. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> when he just like pops up. Yeah. He's clapping with everyone. It's like awesome. So that yeah. shit I thought was so cool. Um, and I think that's why I was so frustrated. I, I kept expecting like to be satisfied and to be like, let me watch Jason Statham do his thing. And then in the end, I was just kind of like, oh, God, like just kind of slogging through you know, all of a sudden we're with the president and the CIA and like, it just felt really like we went off on this tangent and we just kind of stuck with this tangent where I was like, no, I want to see him mess up people that stole from this lady. Um, and so you like the first 25 minutes, I was, <laughs> I was on board for the first 25 minutes. Okay. And then once, okay. it, once it started going CIA, um, but the, there was a, a scene that really bothered me and it's sort of emblematic of why I was not really into it the whole time it's when he's sneaking into the compound at the end with the president there and he grabs the SWAT guy. Um, oh God, I don't even remember this. I watched it two nights ago and I'm already sort of like losing it, but it's when he was under the truck. Um, he like sneaks under the truck, picks up the skateboard and then a guy sees him and he fights that guy and picks him up and change it. It takes his clothes all under the truck. And I was like, Am I expected to believe that he has like knocked out this dude and then taken him away, uh, taken away his clothes and snuck yes. in that way? I yes. just like, I was, yes. I just yes. felt like I was not ready for that. <laughs> Are you telling me you've never done that? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> in my life, maybe, but I don't know. And like, interesting. Okay. There, I, like, I don't want to only shit on it because there was, there's a lot no, of shit on it. Really fucking cool. Like, I do. I love the 
excuse me, the fight scene outside with all the um the uh I don't even know which agency they were with, but he was like, I don't want to hurt them all in the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he like, fights the FBI, anyone. he fights the Secret Service, he yeah. fights he whoever fights he all. fights is the bad guys. Yeah. <laughs> I just read like this is gonna sound like really dickish, but right in the middle of the movie with all the exposition and all the like every scene was like here's exactly what's going on and what's going to happen i was like this just feels like studio notes the movie like that the whole time and i never quite shook from that um interesting yeah and it's all right. last last thing i'll say is where the transporter was sort of hung on this really simple plot this really simple idea of this guy opens a package and breaks his own rules and that starts the whole thing the beekeeper felt like way too many things that we're trying to yeah. do like like Josh Hutcherson, yeah. Jeremy Irons, uh, uh, Redgrave, the president, you know, like, it's just like, I really wanted it to be one person. So that fight at the end with the one-legged guy was awesome and so satisfying. But that was a character that was introduced, you know, three minutes before or something like yeah. that. So anyway, it just felt like a big mess to me. And it's just the kind of stuff that really puts me off of a movie. So I've heard, no, I've heard yeah. other people say that the, mm -hmm. They had, even those that had fun with the movie, I heard people say that third act felt all right. Yeah. We got to end it. Let's yeah, let's have beat all the bad guys and then end it. John so, Salvitti yeah. hated it. Go ahead, Owen. Uh, sorry, John Salvitti hated it. He, he left this like huge rant under one of our posts about it. Uh, he's like a fight choreographer, and like he, he just like yeah, said so this movie sucked. And I was like, oh wow, <laughs> oh wow, interesting, <laughs> interesting. Uh, but uh, I agree with Billy on this one. This character was frustrating, uh, when I was oh, watching yeah. the movie. Yeah. But mm -hmm. but what made me ease up on her was the movie itself addresses <laughs> my frustration when her partner sits her down and goes, "Why are we? Why are you stopping this guy? He's like one of the good guys. You should be supporting this guy. We should let this guy go. Why are you doing this?" And then she says, "Well, you know, we're we're the law. You know, Judge Dredd. I am the law. You know <laughs> yeah, I mean? but dude, like I got frustrated because like he's like." The beekeeper is more angry than she is about her mother dying. Like I, mm -hmm. I'd be just as angry. I'm like, right. I'm gonna right. let this guy go wreak havoc. I don't care. Right. So yeah, I get the frustrations a little bit. And but she lets it's, it's like, yeah. too with these two movies back to back. You see the relationship in the transfer, him and a cop is really clear and it's awesome. It's a lot of people's like favorite part of the movie. And then this mm. one, I just was like, oh, people are gonna fast forward through her because I think it, it just doesn't, it's just strange. It's not clear and it doesn't quite work for me. And yeah. Yeah. One yeah, thing that I, we one it. thing I like about the way they handled her though is, I from the moment I saw her, all I could think of was, please don't fall in love, please don't fall in love, please don't. I was <laughs> I was dreading the two of them yeah. becoming like a couple, of, and I, and they didn't do that for once in an action movie. Right. The lead male doesn't fall in love with the female for right. once, and I thought that was very refreshing. That's how she says thank you after the credits roll. <laughs> ah. <laughs> all right james beekeeper i kind of know how much you feel about it we talked about it but yeah. go ahead is, is it weird that i kind of like the mess that the the plot became no. by the end a lot of people do no. yeah i i'm like as it as the plot started to get crazier like oh yeah the cia tech that was used to hunt terrorists we're now using it to hunt vulnerable people and steal their money like okay i'm in because like i know it's bullshit like there's these, these like you know scam centers they they run out of like Estonia they don't they don't operate in the U.S. they can't yes. but if it's the president's son he's using CIA tech and like okay I'm okay you you took this thing that would have not worked and made it work by making it incredibly stupid I love it <laughs> but I remember in the review man I I mean I stand by that I, I still think this movie is a gift um, they don't really make this kind of thing anymore yeah. and it's just going like kind of like I've had time to really kind of think about it, like everything, like the movie, the cinematography is absolutely gorgeous. Like that scene where he's fighting the the FBI SWAT team, my God, that is such a beautiful looking scene. Even outside of all the great fighting, you know, the lighting is great, the cinematography, the camera work. I, I was complaining about the fight in the transporter that seemed kind of like shaky and chopped up. And the fights in this, the cinematography is shaky, and it's quick cut, but it still flows really well. And they do you these really see it. You can still see like, everything. Yeah, you know, Statham is always dressed much differently than the people he's fighting. So even if you cut to like a close up, you can tell who's like who's yeah, like this. 
they are so different. Just like even if you blur the shot, you can tell who is who. And it makes it so much easier to know like, oh, well, that's not Statham's hand. That's the other dude's hand. That's, you know, it's you, you can do the quick cutting. And as long as you're ca- keeping the flow, everybody knows what's happening. And, you know, it's watching, rewatching the transporter and seeing like, you know, very kind of very Corey Yun choreography for him versus this Jeremy Marina's choreography, which fits him like a glove. Like this yeah. is this is a guy who understands what's where Statham's strength is and uses it perfectly. And that's why this does feel like the culmination. Like it's he has shades of Frank Martin, like lots of shades of Frank Martin, but he's somehow like more dangerous in every way. But the fighting and just the way he carries himself and the hits, the hits feel powerful. The sound design. Oh my God. Sound design. And also I was reading interviews with David Iyer who did a directed the hell out of this. Um, And he even said like Statham, he would know, he wouldn't even have to look at the playback to know if the hit landed, if it worked, if it sold, he could be like, Nope, we have to do it again. And you know, Iyer for his part was like, look, this guy's been doing this for 22 years. This is my first legit movie like this. So he deferred to state them. It's like, this guy knows I'm going to listen to him. And they work really well together. And apparently they're going to be doing another one soon together when Stallone's involved, which is even better. But yeah, like they gave this, like they gave you a reason to hate the villains, just hate them, which is something that the John Wick movies haven't done in years. We're just like watching him take out NPCs here. It's like, no, you, it's very satisfying watching him, you know, take out tech pros. It's just, I could watch that all day. You don't, you don't, you don't fuck with Creed's mom, man. (laughs) (laughs) How is that? How is that not part of like a Creed movie? This is okay. Well, (laughs) like, you know, this very like Mark Zuckerberg looking boxer dude. I don't know. But if I had one criticism for the movie, and I don't even know if it's a full criticism. The dialogue is really on the nose. Mm-hmm. Like it's to maybe, be or not to be. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so on the nose that it feels almost like a satire, but it's not. Mm-hmm. And that was it. Like occasionally it'd be like, you know, it, it, at first it started taking me out of the movie, and but it also kind of primed me like, oh, that's the kind of movie this is. Like, yeah, this is super violent and it's topical, but it's also completely absurd. And as the movie leans further into that absurdity, it just gets better. And even the whole Josh Hutcherson thing where, yeah, you wanted to see him like wring the guy's neck. He wasn't like the physical villain. He was more mastermind. And that's rarely ends with like a fist fight. It normally ends. It's like, he's like, he's Bellic. You know, he is like the, the dude who drinks from the wrong grail cup in uh, the last crusade, you know, He's not. He's not gonna. He's not a fist fight type of guy. He is a getting shot in the head kind of guy. He's a weasel. Hmm. Yes. But you still would have liked to seen him slap him around a little bit. I mean, just like <laughs> manhandle, like throw him through some windows. Yeah. You know, he got he got what he deserved. No worries. Yeah. yeah he did. But, All right. but even the criticism of he doesn't get hit. Like at the very end, he actually is up against like a guy who is kind of a match for him. I feel like that kind of sets up. This is what it takes. This is the level of badass it takes to really kind of make him sweat. So mm-hmm. now we have all this potential for like future movies where, yeah. we, like, okay, now, now we've seen how amazing he is. Now we've seen how badass he is. Let's, let's give him a real threat. Let's, what does it take to challenge this guy? Like, okay, he has to fight all the beekeepers himself. That's, that's like movie number three. That's the end of the trilogy. But, um, yeah, that that fight uh, with the South African dude, South African Ron Perlman, um, <laughs> just fantastic, just so well done. Copy that. Well said, Thrash. Well, again, it's an action movie. It's uh, what what can I say? Jonathan stays. Jason Statham. He, in this movie, he's he's crossed over from action hero into superhero. This movie actually reminded me of, of the newer Batman, where he really, it's its almost like he has superpowers. Um, I thought they, they went a little heavy on the fact that he was a beekeeper, and he is a beekeeper. 
I mean, I, I thought that was you didn't have to beat us over the head with it. I, I, the, the line from Adult uh, Swim, um, um, Robot Chicken. So you're a helicopter and your name is Copter. It's like, <laughs> you, you, we get it. You know, you, you, you don't have to beat us over the head with it. But it worked and he made it work. Um, uh, I love the action, love the cinematography. Um, and you guys are so right. What made this film were the villains. Um, uh, that Garnet kid. We want to see him dead right out the gate. And then we find out he's just a cog in the machine. He's not even the big player. And, of course, who is the big player? Is that spoiled brat billionaire. And, of course, they make it topical. Um, identity theft is a thing. I had a little issue with that myself a couple of years ago. Nothing to this level. But um, it's, it's something that worries me to this day. Not to mention scandals that go right up to the executive office and their immediate family. Something, well, let's face facts, we hear about in the news. This was really, this was a topical film. Over the top topical, but still topical. And again, when the, um, when the bad guys got it, it really, really felt good. Um, if I have one criticism, it seems to suffer from something not new in Hollywood. It's, it's the premise of five is good, ten is better. And I thought some of the action sequences... They deliberately, they weren't just over the top, they were excessively, profoundly over the top, trying to give people their money's worth. And a couple times I felt it fell into the category of the law of diminishing returns when they did that. One other thing, and this is just a real picky of nit with me, when the uh, South African guy, who I wish I could remember his name, I think it's Taylor in real life, I forget his name in the movie. They didn't but mention he, his name. Huh? I don't think they mentioned his name. I don't in the think movie. they did. He's just a South African guy. Lazarus. <laughs> Lazarus. Lazarus. I don't know that from the credits. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. I got that on IMBD. I just forgot. But um, and his buddies come over and they look like rowdy party goers, but they're all his little gang of mercenaries. And the last thing he says to them before they go out on the veranda to take uh, Jason down, as they say, he says to them, "If you have the shot." Take it. What does he do? He has the shot, and he holds on him for about 15 full seconds. Get on your knees. Uh, put your hands behind your head. Thread your fingers. Dude! It's like Pedro Pascali fighting the mountain. Just kill him. <laughs> don't, you know, don't like have this little um, pissing contest. Just click, click, click. He's gone. And um, Lazarus should have known better. He fought a beekeeper. He lost a leg fighting a beekeeper. It seemed out of character that he would try to um, showboat in that scene, at least to me. But all things, all things up, um, said and done, I love this film. It was really, um, it was old school action, but with a really modern uh, craft to it. And I thought it, it was really good. Copy that. All right. You know, it's this is a great versus because you notice we're saying the same things about both movies. Both <laughs> movies are absurd, <laughs> but both movies' endings are disappointing. It's very interesting. Owen, uh, well, I agree with pretty much everything everybody said. Um, one thing I love about the cinematography, which I, I hadn't noticed the first time I watched it, but the second time was how there's like a yellow and black filter sometimes. So like the world, it's the color of a bee because he's a beekeeper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Lazarus, Lazarus yeah. is black and yellow. Yeah. yeah. So well, like you said, it kind of overdoes it, but you know, it's still fun anyway. But my brother brought up a point. See, my brother hated the movie, so I've disowned him obviously. Um, but he brought up a point and then I haven't been able to like get out of my head ever since because it never bothered me at first but there was a point that james made up about uh, josh hutcherson's character at the end where you know he's not like a, a physical guy or whatever and my brother was like i think it would have worked better if he'd been arrested at the end or just like injured or something because he's just robbed this mother of her child and then stays him sort of like walks off into the sunset yeah and, and she's like, like screaming and crying and you're supposed to sort of feel happy and you're like uh no he just kind of killed this guy i know he's a psycho and whatever else but they could have i don't know maybe just arrested him but uh i, I, don't I know, know he's a psycho but uh, you know but you know I mean, he was gonna kill his mom I mean. yeah, he was. Yeah. 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 yeah and she's yeah. still yeah. upset that he died i mean yeah, right it's, it's right his mom but if that, I, that's I, a mom thing yeah. i guess yeah. so yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> But, but I, I don't know, I mean, because he wasn't like a physical threat, then I thought, you know, stick him in jail and uh, he'd probably have a tougher time in there. 
Um, Put them in the uh, snow with Bubba, right? Yeah, exactly. I was, <laughs> I, I was being subtle, whatever. That's what I was meaning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, it didn't bother me as such. But then when my brother brought it up, and I was like, eh, I suppose, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, uh, I, it's one of my favorite Statham movies. Uh, it, it, it does have flaws, like you've all mentioned. Um, I actually, uh, uh, Billy's not his own. My brother felt exactly the same way. Uh, he did not love the movie. Uh, he's not a bit. I'm relieved to know that I'm not the only one. Yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I mean, I do still love it uh, for what it is. Uh, yeah. it's, it's Statham being a badass, and that's what we're, we're paying to see. And it was just the fact that we got that in January, when normally January is sort of like where movies are dumped. Uh, yeah. But we've had some some good ones this year so far. Oh, yeah. So 2024 is a real return well, to form for me. Thank two strikes for that. Mm. Was that? Oh, two strikes. Yeah. 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 Copy that. No, Copy that. Well said. Um, and by the way, Billy, you yeah. are you are outnumbered, but you're not alone. You're a lot like Jason Statham. Yeah. <laughs> are you a beekeeper by any chance? <laughs> I will never tell. If I don't see beekeeper themed honey in Stater Brothers, yeah, I, uh, I need to start selling this very soon. Rick. Well, my very the very first professional novel I ever wrote was for. The Destroyer series. The Destroyer was the second largest selling men's action adventure series in the world. And I got to write three uh, ghost written novels in that series. The Destroyer series was about Remo Williams, who worked for a company called Cure. And Cure was directly uh, controlled by the president to go outside the Constitution to protect the Constitution of the United States. This movie is a destroyer movie. Jason Statham is playing the destroyer. And I wrote three of, and very clearly, because the thing, the big difference is that Remo knew the sun source of all martial arts, which was called Sinanju. So he just could wade through anybody. The stories became basically satires of American life. So when I saw this, I went, they're finally making a good destroyer movie. <laughs> now, there's a word that uh, several of you, if not all of you, have been overusing when describing this movie, and that is, as uh, Fat knows, one of my least favorite words, which is, he's such a badass. He's such a badass. But this movie works because he's not just a badass. He's a smartass. He is, he is Reacher. He is Sherlock Holmes. The reason that he has a hard time at the end is that for every other place, one of my favorite things that happens is before he goes to attack the, uh, the first call center, you don't see him for a while because he's planning. When he walks in, like Sherlock Holmes, like Reacher, like other great, like James Bond, he knows everything that's going on. He has thought ahead. He is not just being a badass with his fist. He's using his brain to set up things. In that second call center, when he does those elaborate traps, he had already planned everything out. He's a smart ass. He is also, he also is a great mark of a great cinematic hero in that he is aware and wants to avoid collateral damage. The problem in Sylvester Stallone movies and, uh, and Schwarzenegger movies of the 80s and stuff is they didn't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, and also the modern Michael Bay movies and all these other movies, uh, Superman movies, hundreds of thousands of people are dying, innocent people. Here, he knows who he's fighting. That's why he's checking. He says at one point, you know, and he just beats up some of these guys without killing them because they don't deserve to die. He's all of this is thought out. And there's a wonderful, really, really wonderful, subtle dialogue sequence. The last talk between Jeremy Irons and Jason Statham when she when he's outside the president's office. Go back and watch that scene. Jeremy Irons plays the slimy American, uh, uh, what's Two-Face. Uh, and Statham just pities him, doesn't kill him, hurts him. 
because he deserves to be heard, but listen to what Statham says. You can, I can tell, I felt that Statham was telling me what he thought. He, Jay, because the one thing, unlike you guys, you know, you're talking about when you've seen these things in the movie theaters and when you haven't, I got news for you. I've seen everything in the theater. Mm -hmm. I grew up, you know, I've been watching movies for 60 years, maybe more, maybe 65. So I see all of it. So I've watched the progression of Jason Statham and he has become more and more himself in every one of these movies to the point where I love that even when he's in the Fast and the Furious films, he doesn't fight the way anyone else in those movies fight. He fights like himself. He's one of these guys who, again, like Clint Eastwood says, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it the way it should be done. He's like Vincent Zhao in all the Chinese movies. He's not going to do, he's not going to fight the way Donnie Yen tells him to fight. He's going to fight the way he fights. You watch, you watch a Wu Tang where he's in that. Everybody else is fighting with fists. There's never a moment in that entire movie that Vincent Zhao closes his hands. He fights the way he should fight. Jason Statham fights the way he fights, the way he wants to fight. And he keeps it just this side of credible. And also there's something else that when he comes on the screen, there's something he has that every movie loving person reacts to, but they may not know they're reacting to it. He is assured. He is full of assurance. When he walks on, when he walked on the screen, I just go, I'm in good hands. This guy, know, this guy knows what he's doing and he does it. And that's another thing. When you know what you're doing, you don't have to expend enormous amounts of effort. And also, I love that final scene with the guy who wants to kill him. And also the guy, they gave him an extra dialogue scene. The people, you know, some of you who were, were complaining about that final fight and why he doesn't just shoot him. He established why he didn't just shoot him in the scene prior. There's that scene where he's he's in that, uh, he do, they do it better in this movie than they did. There's one, there's a movie in um, one of the movies that um, Seagal directed. Every single character in the movie talks about how great Seagal's character is. On Deadly Ground. On Deadly Ground. On Deadly Ground. <laughs> Every single person in the movie. In this movie, they give David Ayer and the guys and Statham, because I believe it was a partnership. I believe Statham controlled this film in terms of what it's his movie. And Ayer was supporting with that with the wonderful cinematographer and the great editor and the rest of the crew. But it... Yeah, he he gave him that dialogue scene. He gave the New Zealander the dialogue scene where he says, he makes it very clear that he doesn't want to kill him. He wants to make him suffer. He wants to win, which is his fatal flaw. If he didn't want to win, he would have shot him. He wanted to prove something to himself, which is all, is what he practically says. Yes. Huh. Did, somebody, wow. did somebody want to add? Oh, no, just not. Much like Pedro Pascal's character in Game of Thrones, which right. is what I, what I, which is what I referenced. So wow, thank you. Yeah, that's an amazing point. Thank you, Rick. Who, who yeah. like who's talking <laughs> for a second there? Because you froze, Thrash. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, I froze again, but I, I didn't want to cut out during what Rick was saying, so I'm going to stay frozen. You. That's okay. very kind. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Other people are bleeding and badass. This guy plans. He doesn't worry. He plans. He's and you can see on. the result. Like when that elevator, when that elevator trap yeah. tripped up, yeah. I went, I, lo I love this guy. <laughs> and also the other, I heard another minor complaint. I forgot what it was again. But the other thing I remember, you may notice in more mediocre action scenes, especially more recent, the best fights at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And I, even Jackie Chan broke that rule. Jackie Chan always mm -hmm. saved the best fight for the end. Yeah. They save the best fight for the end. And I went, yeah. okay, one, one, so one, one. So one. should be. Yeah. yeah. So like I said, and yeah, it's just, I I understand if I, I was, he had me. I was, I was right next to him, right behind him for a whole movie. And so all the things that you guys didn't like, I loved because I felt they had shown me all the little evidences of that. And when, I love the new beekeeper because this show, the moment she showed up, 
I know what the beekeepers had become. I knew why he had retired because mm. of this new beekeeper. Mm -hmm. Because that's the way the beekeepers had become. It, they become all assholes. And he's not an asshole. He's a planner. He's a smart guy. He, wow. had, he had the flammable honey. <laughs> that was another thing. So anyway, yeah. All right. I hated Copy this that. film. I just hated <laughs> it. <laughs> zero stars. Yeah, zero stars. Yeah, all right. Burn it. All right. Burn it well, it is time to vote, baby. But before we go around and uh, with, our, with our panel guests, our legends here, we got some special guest video votes, and their votes will count. I will, as, I will mark them down. Thank you, Rick. And as is tradition, if there is a tie, the public will break the tie. I do have the poll results that you were able to vote on the community page. So they will break the tie if we have a tie. All right, up first, martial artist and stuntman and Power Ranger, Javon Wallace. Hey, Fat Samurai guy, Javon Wallace here. Now choosing between the transporter and the beekeeper, I'm gonna go have to go with the OG, the transporter. One, the first time we really get to see Jason Statham do any type of real martial arts in a movie, and can never go wrong with Corey Young, you know. I love Corey Young's, you know, film directing and his fight choreography. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the transporter. And hopefully I'll see you soon on your next show. See you later, man. Nice. Yeah, shout out to Javon. He's an incredible martial artist. All right, next up, Charlie. What's going on, everybody? It's Charlie with Give Me Back My Action Movies. Uh, Fast Samurai asked me to jump in on this little versus going on between the transporter and the beekeeper. Um, why don't you just ask me which one is my favorite kid? You know, Preston, that, that would have been a whole lot easier. Uh, you got young Statham versus more mature Statham. Uh, I'm going to have to give the edge, though, to beekeeper because of that maturity, you know, rewatching the transporter, he's young, he's jumping around a lot, a lot more spin kicks, you know, a lot more smooth, cool action moves, but the beekeeper, he was just a man on a mission, he was a badass, he looked as hard as steel, and it's probably peak Statham for me right now, so, gun to my head, it's Beekeeper, which is definitely worth everybody's time if you haven't watched it yet. So check me out over at Give Me Back My Action and Horror Movies, the podcast, and we will catch you guys on the next one. Bye. All right. Thank you, Charlie. We're one and one so far. Next That's up, right. uh, we had a blast with him on the last episode of Versus, the fanatical one. Hey, Samurai. Hey, evening, gents. Versus time again. I'm so sorry that I can't be there for this one. It would have been so much fun to dive into these two slices of pure, unadulterated Jason Staten cheese. So we have the beekeeper versus the transporter. We have America versus France. Basically, we have a Big Mac versus a Crockman Sure. American cheese versus Emmental, maybe. Both these movies, not amazing movies, but both really pretty fun movies. Um, but for me, much like McDonald's food, I love eating it. I wear it on my heart, but it doesn't really fill you up. It doesn't really kind of leave a lasting effect. I can't remember much about The Beekeeper, having seen it. There's not that many of the action sequences that I think will stay with me. Um, it was reliant on a pretty ropey script from Kurt Wimmer. They did a pretty good job. David Ayer is a great director, and certainly a couple of those action sequences, the lift and stuff, I have a vague recollection of, kind of. Um, but the transporter man, Corey Yoon, bringing the Hong Kong ham. I will always remember that axe fight. Jason Staten pulling off a pretty great double kick um, up in the air. That great scene with the, the bike pedals that he kicks off when they're in the garage scene. Really, really well done. But ultimately, if it has to come down to a tie, then that tie is broken by the presence of Shuki in the transporter. She's incredible. She's so adorable in what could have been a really thankless throwaway part. And she does a really good job in a language that's not her own of being really absolutely charming and for me is the thing that pushes the transporter into the winning spot um, so yeah i know everybody's loving on the beekeeper for me it's no john wick it's no raid 2 which are the two monumental titans that we discussed last time we got a chance to sit down for versus neither of those two movies are up to that sort of standard um, but for me yeah the transporter one all day every day plus as a much better soundtrack R.I.P. Nate Dog. I got love for all you dogs. I've been the fanatical dragon. 
I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. All right. Fanatical one. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Next up, uh, actress, YouTuber. Uh, my, my, my horror, I call her my, my action films and horror sister. Yeah. She's, I, I've claimed her as my sister. <laughs> Lindsay. Hey everybody. Lindsay here. And we're here to talk about the transporter versus the beekeeper. The Beekeeper versus The Transporter. Two Jason Statham action movies. One from 2002 and one just came out. I'm pretty sure it's still in theaters right now. If you want to know my full thoughts about The Beekeeper, make sure you go check out my review on my channel. It had been a while since I'd seen The Transporter, so it was a nice little revisit. It's fun. It's crazy. It was written by Luc Besson. There's explosions, there's fights, there's gunfire. This movie really does show off Jason Statham's abilities very very well and i love its heightened like almost cartoonish violence in it because some of these fight scenes are just ridiculous especially like the oil slick fight where he straps on some bike pedals <laughs> to kick like 10 dudes asses the beekeeper again we get some amazing fight sequences we get some ridiculous dialogue we get a lot of bee stuff <laughs> The fight in the shop in the barn is amazing. But when weighing these two against each other, it can be a little difficult to judge. Both have great action sequences. Both have a lot of violence. The Beekeeper doesn't have a very dynamic villain. Yes, it has Jeremy Irons in it, but he's not really the bad guy. Transporter, yes, we get a couple villains, but they're very generic. Nothing makes them stand out in a lineup of generic action movie villains. One thing the Beekeeper does have that the transporter does not have is an R rating. The transporter is PG-13, the beekeeper is rated R, and I like my action movies rated R. I like my blood, I like my eviscerations, I like my stabbing. <laughs> I want to see a guy get the barrel of a shotgun rammed into his throat the hard way. I want to see a guy get his fingers cut off. I want to see some SWAT dude get cut in half by an elevator. And I want to see Jason Statham fight some big giant South African dude to the death. Yes, the transporter has many, many, many more explosions, but I gotta give it to the beekeeper on this one. My vote's for the beekeeper. All right, yeah, see how she was talking towards the end there? A lot of violence. That's why she's my sister. That's why I claimed yeah. her. <laughs> she doesn't know this. I, I just claimed her. But yeah, shout out to Lindsay, yeah. All right, you guys know this guy. Hello, friend Jay here, the commentary bees, recovering from a cold, here with my... Thoughts on the beekeeper versus the transporter. First, the beekeeper. I was pleasantly surprised by this film. I didn't have any expectation. You know, when I go, when I went to see the film, you know, this is like a great throwback to all those 1980s action films with Stallone and Schwarzenegger, where they never get hurt or shot. Whereas every time they shoot somebody, they all get shot. I love the over the top villain. I love the campy side characters, like the one you saw at the call center. You know, especially that plot twist of a true villain. You know, it's like, are you fucking kidding me? You know, like who the bad guy really was. And then you also have this great brutality, you know, in terms of the fight. You know, you have the great gas station fight, you have the great night fight at the end. With that said, um, also the film was shot, you know, beautifully. With that said, I felt that uh, the you know the film focused you know really a bit too much on the bad guys more on than on Jason Staten. And also, I felt the FBI characters, the two FBI agents. I felt that they were just written in a way that they just conveniently show up or, or need it whenever they need it. And like when, when the plot needs them, they just show up. So those are the kind of like the flaws that I have I felt for this film. And then I went watched the transporter again. And once again, I was just stuck by how great, how inventive, how creative the fights were, the chases were, the great opening car chase, the great chase at the end. And of course, the lovely Shu Chi. Like, how can you resist the lovely and sexy Shu Chi? She was great in every single scene. Of course, Korean's action choreography was brilliant. This feel really more like a Hong Kong film, except that you you know, have Westerners in it. And of course, it also felt like a, a more bigger budget film than The Beekeeper, a film more international, a film more like a James Bond film. So as much as I love The Beekeeper and I wish to see a sequel to that film, my vote for this Versus episode goes to The Transporter. Until next time, take care and bye-bye. All right, it's getting heated. It's getting heated. Like, Shout out to the commentary beast that is Frank Jang. And I guess I've been saying it wrong this whole time. <laughs> I've been saying shoe key this whole time. There you go. Frank corrected us. All right. Shout out to Frank. Uh, one more actor, martial artist, stuntman, action film director, and director, Michael Hode. What's happening, big man? How are you? It's Michael Hode here, fresh wrapped off 
A Woman Scorned, which is the action movie I told you about, where I was the action director and the lead villain in that, hence the blonde hair. Uh, but yeah, you asked me about Beekeeper and the Transporter. Now, I, I prefer Beekeeper, and I'll tell you why. One, because I think the premise is great. I love the premise of the guy, this lone guy, and all he cares about is his bees, and then they mess with his landlord, and then he's on the warpath. So I just love that concept. I think it's a quite a unique concept. And the action was superb. Um, actually, one of the, the actors that I hired for A Woman Scorned, he, he was in that, uh, John Calloway, he worked on Beekeeper. And uh, yeah, so th I, I thought the action was high level. It was simple, but executed really well. And you know, that's what I like, like hard hitting um, military style martial arts. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. So I, I would say that's better than the transport just because of the story and the, the um, the kind of unique premise in that way and uh, I, I was pleasantly surprised with that movie so that's my vote brother and uh, hope to see you soon and I'll be on your show to to talk about some of these projects I've got coming up <laughs> yeah shout out to Michael man are, are we are we tied right now right? we are tied oh my goodness mm -hmm. so to James and John who are brand new to this uh, to this episode how we vote here you could be a critic about it or you could be biased. It doesn't matter your reasons why you're voting for what you're voting for. And uh, we will start with John. You couldn't put me on a harder versus for my first one. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you told me what it was, I was like, God damn it. I'm like, <laughs> so listen, I love all of Jason Statham. I mean, like even in what's considered bad movies, I'm still like, I still watch it because it's Jason Statham. Like I, I'm, my ex, not my now ex, I always made a joke with her. Like, I'm not gay, but I would marry Jason Statham because he is that awesome. <laughs> so, for this to be, first. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so for this to be my okay, I love them both. Okay, the transporter, like I said, the only real was the one with Jet Li, and I wasn't really impressed by him. Like I said, I had to do a double ticket, say, Oh, that's the same guy. Cause I didn't see the other one, like lock stock and two spoken barrel. I hadn't seen those movies. Um, so to see the transporter and to see this guy do this and, and see the birth of a new action star on screen was just awesome. But even with that said in Corey Yoon's choreography and the slickness and the stylize, which I'm all about, you know, and the, and you know, we've never seen him do that jump kick again. I'm like, why? It's like, come on, get up there. It's like, they could, they could pull him up like they did the last time, but I got to go with the beekeeper. It's a culmination of Jason Statham. Like I said, I, I don't know if it's because I'm older now, but just to see how he's he's elevated his action status from the beginning to now, you just, I mean, yes, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's a one man army movie, and but you got to love him. You know, Owen and I talk about it all the time. It's like, it's like, you did this, you just put, like, I was laughing. I had a smile on my face. My daughter was enjoying it. And it's just pure, essential Jason Statham. And he kicks ass and he's a smart ass. I'm sorry I didn't put that into my, into my repertoire. <laughs> but when you were saying that, you are correct, Kung Fu Santa. He is the <laughs> smartest badass there is around. But, um, yeah, in terms of hard R-rated violence, uh, what's her name? I'm sorry, I forgot what uh, her name. Lin was. Lindsay Washburn. Yeah, I gotta agree with Lindsay, man. I gotta see. You know, I love. I don't mind PG-13 action movies. You know, I enjoyed the transport, but you know, chopping guys' fingers off. You know, throwing them off a bridge connected to a truck. You know, making the popping the guys' teeth out with a shotgun. You know, it's like I. You just can't beat it, and. It's just it's his best fighting, and I love the fact that he's old like me now. And I I wish I could still move. I'm like I'm I'm a martial artist, but it's like I feel like I'm slowing down. Again, let me kung fu, gentlemen, kung fu. You, <laughs> if you do kung fu, if you do tai chi, if you do qigong, you never have to stop, and you'll be more powerful. Well, yeah. But just let me know. I'll teach you. Uh, no worries, no worries. But yeah. um, yeah, like um. But it's the you'll, you'll be you'll be you'll be throwing fireballs uh, by the time Rick's done. <laughs> right, just slap, just one, <laughs> one nice slap. All right, copy that beekeeper for yep, John. Yep, it's the beekeeper for me. All right, yeah. nice Nubis. I did not expect this to go the way it's gone so far. That is crazy. Tradi tra it's always a tradition with verses. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, 
Yeah, both movies are very good. Um, I have really no huge complaints, but, you know, only one can survive here. <laughs> and, you know, as I said, like, it, it's funny when someone brought up the female cop thing, because that, I, as I, re like, rethink about that, I really hate that fucking character. <laughs> because I just, I, just, I just don't like that she's so indecisive throughout the entire film. Yeah. So what that does is when you have something like that, it makes the movie kind of clunky, which goes back to what Billy was talking about. Uh, it's got so many things going on. So, you know, if you look at like a John Wick film, everything still falls into place nicely. This one does not. And then we get to the ending, which I brought up, you know, my little mini review there. And it, it's kind of like going to a massage parlor and just not getting the happy ending. Like, I just, <laughs> you know, it's just, it, it, it's not, it just doesn't do it. Whereas it's simple and, and as structured as Transporter is, it just goes from start to finish and boom, it's all gone, baby. Transporter for me. <laughs> Copy that. Happy ending. All right. Billy, uh, the beekeeper. All right. Owen, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> moving on. We know what Billy wants. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Billy. Yeah. We need to hear you yeah. say it. Uh, I'll say, I'll, I'll make it a little surprise for you. Transporter. Yeah. Beekeeper, just not, I, just not for me. Like, I, I feel like the things that I found wrong about it or found like I didn't like, it's this stuff that just kind of tanks a movie for me. And I just never got on board with it. Not my thing uh transporter as silly as it is and over the top action when he's jump the the moment i'm thinking of it it's not the most ridiculous but it's the one i always think of when he's jumping over the front of the car and he grabs it and he flips and he kicks into the windshield is like i don't understand how that physically works doesn't matter <laughs> like <laughs> as silly as it is yeah transporter for me it's a classic and um yeah, I mean, All right. uh, anything anything Owen's brother says, I'm on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, James. So I'm going to have to go with the beekeeper on this. Um, yeah, when I rewatched The Transporter, I just kind of saw too many things about it where it's like, it, it, I don't know, it, it didn't hit me the way it used to. It didn't hit me the way the beekeeper did. Um, it feels like an action movie that just happens to have Jason Statham, whereas the beekeeper feels like an action movie built around him. And they both go to like absurd places, but I would argue the beekeeper kind of owns its absurdity uh, a bit more. Whereas like transporter was more just like, it was a movie from 2002. That was just how absurd things were back then. <laughs> but yeah, like just yeah, so, so much about the beekeeper just seems to work like you know the transporter is like it, it's it's like a slab of iron whereas the beekeeper is a is a finished sword you know this is a this is like it is peak statement like absolutely everyone involved including him they know they know what he's good at they know what they know what they have whereas it feels like with the transporter they're still trying to they're still kind of figuring that out even statham is kind of still figuring it out whereas this it's like you know, this is the best he's been in years. It's like out of nowhere, like, you know, the Expendables 4, it's put that behind us. The Meg movies, those are fun side projects, but this is, this is like, this is it. This is the real deal. I copy that. All right, Thrash. Um, again, to agree with so many of the voices on this one, it really was a photo finish. Um, I have a lot of love for both movies, and I can't stress that part enough. If I am forced to pick one, and you have to, or the entire point of this exercise is lost, <laughs> I'm going to have to go with the beekeeper, and I'll tell you why. I've always had a soft spot for vigilantes. Maybe it's because I'm such a Clint Eastwood fan. But, you know, he is, he's part in, beekeeper, he's part vigilante, he's part terminator, uh, he's smart, as Rick pointed out. And I think you put them all together, and it's just, I just, I just enjoyed the movie just a wee bit more. So I'm Team Beekeeper for this discussion. Copy that, Owen. You know, I'm actually still deciding. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. everyone keeps making good points. I'm like, that's a good point. Oh no, <laughs> uh, well, right? I was the like, verses is all it. about. The verses is all about. So man. I have to pick. 
Yeah. Screw you, fat guy. Flip a coin. Yeah, so love my R-rated action movies, so I, I really do enjoy The Beekeeper. But uh, I also really love the, uh, the character of Frank Martin in The Transporter because he's actually a really crap transporter and keeps breaking his own rules all the time. <laughs> uh, but it makes for entertaining movies. But I like him. He's kind of surly like me. Um, and and I, I've, I've noticed that he's just like he's complaining all the time, as uh, you could say. Uh, and and uh, I was like, I, I can empathize with that. Um, so it's also Transporter is a movie that gave us Jason Statham, the action hero. And there wouldn't be a beekeeper otherwise. So I'm just going to say the transporter and be nice. There we go. All right, Rick, where are you at? Beekeeper. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't vote yet. We are tied. We are six wow. to six. Six to six. Wow! Look at that. All right, and Rick, it's beekeeper for you. Beekeeper for me. All right, so it's up to samurai guy here. Hmm. Will it be a tie? Samurai he's guy. Going, and then, and then he's going. He's going to beekeeper. He's going beekeeper. I don't know. We'll <laughs> don't, see. Don't, don't. I saw you. I saw you reacting there. I saw you. Don't I challenge him. He's don't challenge him. He may well. switch just I'm, to be. I'm not right. challenging. I'm trying to get him to change his fucking right mind. <laughs> when you see me react like this, I'm happy because the versus episode is good and yeah. people are going yeah. back and forth. So when you see me do that, that's what I'm doing. Um. Yeah, rewatching uh, Transporter, I haven't seen it in years, man. Years. And rewatching it, I was like, man, I forgot how fucking fun this was. It was so much fun. And I just enjoyed the hell out of it. It's now making me want to revisit the sequels and uh, do a video with Nubis in the future. We'll do a rank video for sure, just for fun. Because that's what this yeah. channel is all about, is having fun talking movies. Um, but uh, the opposite of Anubis. Uh, I get his reasons why he hated the beekeepers ending. Uh, for me, though, I you know give me you know the staircase fight oh, yeah. action sequence mm. that leads to this oh, yeah. any day any day over parachute horrible villain death. I forgot the stairway fight. I and, forgot the and, stairway and open fight. up the trailer. The end. Uh, so I gotta go with the transporter. I mean uh, the beekeeper. <laughs> Hey, all right. The Super Bowl right. where you made both t shirts, you know, just in yeah, case. If you have them both ready, or do you just know this is going to win? I am a professional. I'm always ready. Now, who did the public vote for if we had to break the tie? I bet the beekeeper. Look at that. Wow. 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 A lot of purists out there. Yeah. yeah. Listen, listen, as I said, it was, I, Tomorrow, I you could come to me and I'd be like the transporter. I mean, it's like, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really was a photo yeah. finish. It really. Oh, was. by the way, if we had a if we had a tie last week, um, I mean last month for the last versus episode, the public actually voted John Wick over the Ray Two. Wow. They <laughs> voted for John Wick Four over the Ray Two. Yeah, I'm not yeah, surprised. I was the odd man out in that one too. Oh, here <laughs> she is, my sister, <laughs> Lindsay. Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching. Yes, yes. <laughs> We got to talk some more horror and action movies in the future for sure. Oh, awesome! Uh, that would be great. But yeah, this was a like all these versus episodes, another hilarious, badass, smartass, uh, <laughs> epic episode. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Hey, like, share, and subscribe uh, to the old Samurai guys. Share this video, get it out there. We're trying to get to thirty thousand subs. But more, more importantly, enough of me, enough of me. More importantly, all these legends that's in this panel right now. In the description box below this video, subscribe to John Action Flicks, baby. Subscribe to Owen the Action Relief. Subscribe to Thrash Pondo, baby. Subscribe to Anubis and follow Billy and James on their filmmaking journey. Uh, they both have whispered into my ear on some future projects they got coming out, and I'm just losing my mind. I'm losing my mind because they're going to be epic. So follow them on their filmmaking journey and also follow Kung Fu Santa. And uh, we will see you, legends on the next one that's right there we go oh there he is charlie he's back again <laughs> it was meant to be perfect way to end the episode uh tomorrow i have a special guest on the movie dojo podcast and then saturday i might have another one as well i am a busy bee as you can see <laughs> all right guys no more puns watch the movie for that all right guys take care keep watching movies and i'll see you on the next one take care guys